Let me share with you two guys that I know that's going to be very pertinent here to the conversation. So you can see this picture here. Uh, the older gentleman is a gentleman named Ross Brand, a Ross good friend of mine. And the other guy is Ben Gothard. Now, these two share something really in common that you're going to really appreciate. In fact, we're going to be going into more of a deep dive on how they were able to leverage live guest interviews into self-published books. This means they were able to kind of double dip. Not only were they doing their normal job of live streaming, but they turned those live streams into books and they leveraged the expert authority from the person that they're interviewing. So what do they share in common? We'll discuss that. How did they leverage the interviews with the experts? We'll discuss that even more. And why were their books completely different? Believe it or not, they use the same method, but it's two different ways that they did it. So we've been talking over the past seven weeks about self-publishing and streaming and how it's such an unlikely duo, but gosh, it works. It works like a charm. And if you've already been sticking around this long, you probably know that this week we are going to be talking about how you can write books with an expert on your side. But let's do just a very brief recap here because I want to kind of share how I was able to publish a book with great success. Over on June 11th of 2020, I streamed an entire process where I wrote a book live in front of people. It went for about 11 hours, by the way. It was crazy. You fast forward to right about September the 7th of 2020, I published Amazon Keywords for Books, which went on to sell 65 copies on launch day, became a best-selling book, became a five-time award-winning book. It's been published in ebook, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, but Dale, what if? What if I just honestly don't have the creativity? I'm not a good typist. I don't have the time. Well, I'm so glad that you asked that because there is something specific that we can do. Previously, we talked about repurposing live streaming or the live stream video and to self-publish books on Amazon. If you want to take a look at that, you can always go back and review it. I'll give you a link in just a moment here. What we're going to discuss today is interviews with experts. But what do you need for a great interview? And how do you approach guests for this type of project? And what are some best practices? So these past seven weeks have been so crazy. I'm just so happy that you've taken some time out your day in the self publish and stream series. This is seven part of a seven part series. If you want to take a look at the replays, visit my link over at dailinks.com slash stream so you can get up to date on everything that I'm going to share in today's um, broadcast. And also, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give you free access to my preferred streaming software called Restream. Yeah, you're going to love it. That's what I'm actually aggregating out right now. In fact, could you do me a favor? You're watching this live or on the replay. Let me know where you're watching from. I definitely would love to hear from you if it's over on Facebook, if it's on LinkedIn, if it's on YouTube, if you're specifically in a Restream YouTube channel or Facebook page, let me know inside the chat and also what's your geography. So that way I can get a good handle on things as we roll into the Q&A a little bit later into the broadcast. So, all right, continuing on with a little bit of the recap because I want to kind of get into the meat of the content today. Um, we kind of discussed what happens during this live broadcast that we're we're doing these live broadcasts maybe we're writing it or maybe we're repurposing those stuff the whole process works like this number one you're going to create the content just that simple whether you're writing it yourself or you're going to see about let's say for instance bring in a guest interview or maybe you're just doing a video yourself so you're going to create the content the very next most vital step is going to be polish the content. And when I say polish the content, this means that you're going to see about taking the content, editing it. That means deep editing. You're going to dig out some pro writing aid, maybe Grammarly, maybe use Microsoft editor, and you're going to go through a deep edit. As soon as you're done with that, you're going to send it to a professional editor. They're going to get it cleaned up for you. You're going to make some corrections 
and rinse and repeat until you've got it right so you have a good polished book because one of the worst things you can do is try to rush this and put out some eh, mediocre content that really sounds almost like reading a video and you don't want that to happen. So after that specific step, you're gonna end up hyping the content. That means you're gonna promote it. You're gonna let people know that it's in the pipeline, it's coming out, so you publish the content. But what if? We're gonna go into the what if again this week because it's something we said last week. What if we could just live stream and take the actual content that we did there, the actual speaking, the dictation, if you will, and transcribed it into a book. But what if though, let's say you're like, man, I, I don't, I'm not an expert, Dale. I'm not, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. So this is where we're going to circle back around to my good friend, Ben Gothard here. So here's a little bit about Ben's story. And you're going to actually find this very fascinating. Love me some Ben. The guy is just full of energy, a lot of great ideas. He has a podcast that he multi-streams out to 18 different platforms, by the way. Restream didn't pay Ben to for me to say this or anything else like that. Ben and I have been friends for so long. When I fell in love with Restream, he naturally went ahead and got it himself. And this crazy man, he actually publishes and he live multi-streams out to 18 different platforms. Say what? No, let me repeat that. He does it to 18 different platforms. But Ben got to kind of thinking. He's just like, you know, um, is there a way that I can take this same work that I've already done and repurpose it in a meaningful way? And that is what really got him to become so prolific is asking that question of, okay, I've already done the work. What can I do next? So what Ben ended up doing was he picked up transcripts. Now I can't entirely remember for sure. I think he might've just used YouTube's auto captions. Could have been something like that. Maybe he hired out Rev. Maybe he even got a freelancer of some sort. I know that he ended up getting some freelancers to clean up some of the writing and the editing. Then he launched the book. And I'm talking like he published dozens of books because he's done so many interviews. In fact, if he actually did a book for every single one of his interviews, I would imagine he'd probably be up in the hundreds by now. He's just picked a few of them. So you can actually see here in this picture of this uh, book cover here, that's me. Yes, he interviewed me and this was part of his little experiment of finding out, okay, will this be worthwhile? Is this something I should be pursuing? And uh, I was game. I was like, you're going to make this into a book? Heck yeah, I don't need to do nothing. It's a great way to give me a little bit of love without having to invest anything. So he launched the book. He published dozens of these books. He usually just does eBooks mostly. There's one thing, and, and I know you're listening to me out there, Ben. Uh, in a perfect world, he would have launched on eBook. He would have done an imprint book, whether it's paperback or hardcover or both. And he would also do audiobook because he could probably take those audio files and have it professionally edited and mastered to where it would be of good quality that he can be able to publish it through platforms like Audiobook Creation Exchange, Audible, Amazon, Findaway Voices, and so much more. That's in a perfect world. Ben, I love you. I, I'm only just giving you a hard time right now. I think it's absolutely exemplary and it's just a great example of how you can leverage interviews with people on your channel. Now, if that's not enough, I told you there was gonna be two different methodologies and we'll cover why they were so different here in just a second. Next up is my buddy, Ross Brand, a good friend of mine. I had shared just a little bit about Ross Brand in the past podcast, broadcast, excuse me, what I meant to say. And I kind of j just discussed how he ended up just leveraging a ton of expert interviews. That was just, absolutely crazy. He actually streamed for hours at a time. So here's what Ross did. He created an event. It was a live event that he was able to multi-stream out to numerous platforms. Once it was all done, he took the video and hired a transcriptionist to transcribe everything into 
the specific person saying it and what they said. So it was almost like an interview style type thing. He did some editing and pretty much that was it done. Now, of course, there was much more work for him to, you know, get it fully formatted, get a good book cover, market and promote it. I talk more about what he did in his launch strategy in the past broadcast. So you want to go back and take a look at that. So the question is, how did Ben and Ross do things differently? You would think, okay, so the theory is, Dale, I get on a guest expert. I go live, I interview them, and then I get a transcript. Shouldn't their books be exactly the same? And that's where I'm going to go ahead and share with you that, no, they're actually kind of different. And I think both of them are very unique formats. So let's start out with Ross's book. And actually, beautiful book, by the way. Awesome cover. Look how thick that is. A hundred live streaming and digital media predictions. But if you open it up and you look into some of the content in here, you will see that quite a bit of it is interview style, okay? So he didn't necessarily take the content and change it too much beyond maybe fixing some grammatical errors and some misspellings and typos. But beyond that, he presented it as is. And I said to him, I'm like, Ross, if you're gonna do that, make sure that you put a little bit of extra bonus content in there that you didn't otherwise have in that live stream because otherwise someone's going to pick up this book and they're going to be pretty upset that they can just go and watch a free video about this and he was like good point so he ended up i think he'd only had originally like 65 interviews and they ended up getting an additional 35 actual written content from some creators so that was a really good way that he was able to leverage those interviews now let's now sadly I don't have a copy of Ben's book on my hand or any of his books but what he did was he took the interview the transcription and then he was able to curate the information from that and actually turn it into a readable manuscript not just an interview of sorts so it was almost like the expert was directly talking with the readers inside the manuscript and that book i think that's pretty cool what should you choose if you're going to interview a guest expert on your live streaming you know channel or on your platform what should you choose now this is up to you it's going to depend on what you would like to do to represent your brand. First of all, know your audience. Ross knows his audience really well, as does Ben knows their, he knows his audience as well. Knowing what their expectations are in advance is going to help make the decision a little bit easier for you of do you interview them and just do a transcript as is with some mild editing, or do you take that curate the information, write a completely new manuscript with the information that you have, and then launch it out there. So I will let you know, obviously, as you can kind of hear, Ross had an easier path than what Ben had. Ben took a little bit of extra time to actually go through and polish this manuscript and make it a little bit more of less of like a magazine interview and more of an in-depth talk with this guest expert. So that part I think is really cool. It's up to you again, what's the work that you wanna put in and what does your audience expect? All right, so now that we know what makes them so different, how do we take this and use it? What's some practical advice? So let's lay some groundwork first. You have to find your guests. Now, where you find those is going to be completely up to you. Social media is a great avenue to do that in, but I would recommend that if you are approaching somebody and giving them a proposal of sorts of, hey, we're gonna do this interview, you, you might want to be delicate about it because if you go, hey, I'm gonna interview, you're gonna turn it into a book. They're gonna go, okay, well, first, I just wanted to do an interview with you. So try to find the guests, and as soon as you can find a guest that's willing to do a live interview with you, this is when you're going to go ahead and explain your plan. Now, be thorough about what you want to do, what it is that you're going to accomplish this, and let them know what's in it for them. Because here's the deal. Chances are very likely, if this person's a guest expert, 
they're probably thinking to themselves, well, why don't I just make that into a book? First of all, you're going to be doing all the work for them. You're going to do all the transcribing. And in some instances, you're going to make a little bit of cash. Mm, that's going to be the part that kind of hits people a little bit differently. So that's where you're going to want to address any concerns or any kind of questions that they might have about this whole process. Are they going to get just exposure? Is that the big deal? Because I will tell you that Ben pretty much said to me, hey, I'm going to be putting out this book. It's going to be based on your interview. Uh, are you cool with that? And I'm like, do I have to pay anything? And he's like, no. I'm like, are you going to market and promote it? He's like, yes. And I'm like, done. I was like, can I share some links to my stuff? Like inside your, your, he's like, yep. So indirectly, I as a guest was able to benefit from Ben's extra work. He had to hire the transcriptionist. He had to go and do the actual manuscript. He had to do everything about that. I didn't have to do a dime. I just sat back. So that's one of the nice things. And that's something you can also assure your guest is that they're going to have something that they could pro possibly leverage. So if they don't even have books published whatsoever, much less a blog post, then this might be a great option that you can kind of entice them and say, hey, look, I'm going to create the whole manuscript. I'll get it over into your hands, let you know what you have. And if you got any kind of concerns from that point on, you can go ahead and address those things. So you've addressed the concerns. The next thing is going to be, all right, money. Give it to me point blank, Dale. How is this going to work out? Because if I go through all the trouble to interview this guest and they're expecting to get money, what, what do I do? Okay, first of all, don't put it on the table just yet because chances are very likely, like myself, when someone was willing to go ahead and turn it into a book, I was like, yeah, do it. I didn't want any money. I didn't want the hassle to have to worry about the distribution or fixing it if for some reason the manuscript needs editing or typos or something like else. I just, that's all your stuff. You're just promoting me, so that's fantastic. But let's say that you get somebody that said, ooh, I want in on this. Give me a piece of that pie. I want it. You're going to make sure that you set up some type of a revenue share. Now, platforms like draft to digital has revenue share built into it, meaning that if you have a 50-50 split with somebody or a 60-40 or 70-30, whatever you might determine is appropriate for your guest, draft to digital will sort that out for you when you go to their platform. That's draft Two, digital, all one word. You can go to draftdigital.com. Publish Drive is another avenue. They have something called Abacus, and that's another way to actually track any kind of earnings and expenses and such like that. And you can invite collaborators. So in this instance, if I had you on as my guest interview, I would provide you access to Abacus. Now, I think it runs about roughly 2 to $3 per book that you put into this revenue share model, but it's a great way to offer transparency to your guest interviewees. So that's something to think about. Now, you're probably saying, oh my gosh, this sounds like a legal minefield. It can be. It can be somewhat scary if you don't know what you're doing. So rather than me just sitting here going, well, just hope for the best, get their word on it and handshake. I'm going to tell you that it is my responsibility to you to say, consult an attorney, a business attorney, sit down with one. There's a lot of business attorneys out there that will offer a free first time consult to figure it out what it is that you need for your business. And then you would approach that person, find out how much that would cost you to get a boilerplate agreement, meaning a very basic agreement that you can use for just about any interview guest that you can and just fill in the blank. They sign on off, off on it and then you're good to go. So it's going to probably run. Anytime you get an attorney, it's going to vary from one region to the next, anywhere from about $100 upwards to $500 or more to hire a lawyer to do this type of agreement. Now, I don't recommend sites that have these agreements automatically made out because unfortunately, there's going to be some things that are not applicable to you that is inside the contract that's all ready set on whatever legal Zoom or anything else like that. And there's going to be some things that need to be in it that 
isn't in it. So that's why I say go to a business attorney. It's well worth it. It'll give you peace of mind and rest assured as you publish this book, you should be driving some more revenue in and paying for that, that, um, that agreement. So that's the one thing. Now, I got the legal stuff out the way. That's always nerve wracking. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to talk to a business attorney. It, it, it's, it's worth it. Trust me on this here, folks. Um, outline the interview. Get it all ready in advance before you go live. I know you're probably the type of person that says to yourself, you know what? I'd like to just freestyle it. You know, I'm just going to go with my gut and that's fine. But I would recommend that you at least outline it. And if you veer off just a little bit, that's totally fine because you can go ahead and clean all that stuff up in the edits. The outline is going to help you out as you are going through the interview and keeping it on track. You're going to make sure that you adjust any points before you go live according to what the speaker's needs are. So I always like to send an outline before I go live so then the guest can kind of see exactly what we're going to discuss and not be blindsided by any kind of questions that I have for them. All right, now we've got the guest. We got him booked. We consulted an attorney. We've got an agreement put in place. We outlined the interview. What comes next? You know what's going to be next. We're going to have to go live. And for some reason, uh, it just skipped right past that. So we're going to go ahead and stay on this here. You're going to go live on, on across all platforms. Why wide? Well, wider equals more reach, more awareness. And that's going to be huge. And especially if you can tell live viewers, hey, we're going to be doing this and turning it into a book. So there's going to be a live question and answer at the very end of the session that we're going to have you possibly involved in a future publication. So that part can kind of be fun. Use Restream, folks. I just, I've said this since day one. You can get your seven day free trial of Restream Pro when you go to dailylinks.com slash Restream Pro. Now, do you make it interactive or don't you make it interactive? I would recommend that you address your live viewers when you come in. By the way, what's up live viewers? I see you right now and replay viewers as well. But I would recommend keep your attention on your guest. They're the important person right now. And if your intent is to take this interview and turn it into a self-published book, then you want to make sure that everything is spotless. And if you're sitting here minding the chat and typing to people as they're answering the question, you're not paying attention. So you can't be able to formulate better questions or create dialogue that's going to be compelling and get enough information to actually fill a book. So I would say, keep your attention on your guests, save a Q and A for the, the end and just incentivize people. They stick around for the Q and A. There's a good possibility their question could be able to pop up into a publication. All right. Now my slideshow is caught up here. What do we do after the broadcast? Well, it's just this simple. We're going to go ahead and transcribe the content. Now you're probably saying transcribe. Okay. What exactly does this mean? Essentially it means taking that audio and turning it into text. You will find that there's a lot of platforms, including places like YouTube and LinkedIn, and I think to a certain extent, Facebook that have auto captions available. But let me just have a direct conversation here with you folks. Auto captions can be horrible. How many people can, can uh, attest to this? They can be horrible. You could be reading something and it makes absolutely no sense. So with that being said, and since there's no punctuation typically with auto captions, you're left with having to edit so much more with auto captions. And in the end, you're going to be stuck with having to do much more work and saddle with more time to actually have to go through this. I totally believe in DIY. It's an absolutely great way to kind of do things. If you want to go ahead and get the auto caption and go and fix it yourself, go ahead. Um, I would just say it's a complete nightmare. I've tried to do it myself and I'm just like, no, I will just hire a transcriptionist because then they can go ahead and pull out filler words like, uh, and um, and so, or things like that. And also address who exactly is speaking at a given moment. And they put the punctuation, of course. Now, my preferred way of doing things, you see it here on the screen is a transcription service called Rev. And uh, Rev is fantastic. I have literally invested thousands into this company. They have done nothing but stellar work. They have a 99% accuracy that they boast. 
actually I think is 99.9% accuracy. They have affordable rates. It runs about a buck 25 per minute of content. So let's just say, for instance, let's just break down some math here. Go with me for just a second here. Let's say the average words spoken per minute is 150 words per minute. And that's at a pretty fast pace, by the way. This means that if we were to continually fill an hour of talking, that would be about roughly 9,000 words which equals about 30 to 40 pages. So all in all, if we were just to kind of just do the math on this, all right, at 60 minutes times $1.25 per minute, it's gonna roughly run us about 75 bucks to get essentially a short read. Now, what you could do is something a little bit more in depth, but of course it's gonna cost a little bit more. So something like what Ross did, he's, he went beyond an hour. I think it was a good five or six hours that he was doing these live interviews and it was absolutely incredible. So only go for as long as you believe is going to be affordable for you in a budget. Visit dalelinks.com slash rev to get your transcriptions done for you today. Again, I wholeheartedly endorse Rev. Fantastic company. Big shout out over to them. Okay, so we've got the transcription. What comes next? You got to edit it. You got to format it. You need to proofread it. Maybe get a couple other people outside of your inner circle that will proofread it for you. Fix any kind of indiscretions, any kind of issues, typos, misspellings, things like that. And then go for publishing it. Last but not least, promote. So you've got edit, format, proofread, publish, and promote. Just remember those little things. Edit format, proofread, publish, and promote. There's going to be plenty to clean up, I promise you. I hear so many times where there's some old school authors that are just like, that's not writing, that's voice dictation. Yes, it is. But it produces the same thing that you would with writing. With that being said, not all stuff that translates well in conversation is going to translate well into literature. That's why you need to take that extra time to go through and edit that manuscript, clean it up as best as possible. Hire out for most processes if possible, if it's within your budget. Um, I honestly just don't have the time to sit down and go through and edit all this stuff all on my own and format it and proofread it and then publish it and promote it. I hire out on those type of processes. And the nice thing is, since it's kind of your baby, when you go to edit yourself, you're going to miss some things that you would otherwise be able to see if you weren't kind of biased to that. What comes after this? We've published, we promoted, we're ready to rock and roll. Keep the video up. Continue to market and promote the event replay. Tell people to come on back. And even when your book is published, you can actually put the link to your book to buy it off of any of the platforms. If you're on Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Google Play Books, then you're good to go. So, after that, you can always edit it if possible. Make cuts if you need to, but make sure that you keep the meat of the content. Give you viewers a reason to come back again. So that way, there's a good polished interview and they're a little bit more invested to want to learn a little bit more and possibly buy your publication. Include replay access to readers only after a launch. That could be like, say, for instance, we leave the video up, but then we put it unlisted. We make it only available to people that have purchased our book. So that could be one way to do things. So that's the story of Ross Brand and Ben Gothard, two really good friends of mine who have absolutely just crushed it in this business. Big congrats to both of these guys in becoming best-selling authors. And uh, one of them is an award-winning author as well, and Ross. So, uh, Folks, I did say that I was going to go ahead and share with you that you can pick up Restream 100% free, which you've watched so far, I've done inside Restream Studio. It's really simple. If you're not tech savvy, it's really easy. You open up your browser. You go to Restream.io. You set up yourself an account. By the way, you can go to dalelinks.com slash Restream to get your free account set up. And you're going to add all the different avenues that you want to go ahead and broadcast to, including YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, LinkedIn, 
oh my gosh, there's there's some platforms I've never even heard of that are on there. And that probably could be an option for you. So if you want to get free access, go on over to dailinks.com slash restream today. And if you want to see the rest of the series that we've done here, because this is the seventh part of a seven part series, go over to dailinks.com slash stream today. So that way you can be able to catch all the previous parts. I'm gonna come on over here to the live chat and I see it's popping today. Thank you so much everybody for tuning on in. All right, so I see a very first one, here we go. David Hunt says, I have an entertainment channel on YouTube where I play piano for about 40 minutes. How can I turn this into a book? Seeing that I didn't interview people like that. <laughs> I think you know the answer on this one here. Uh, I guess probably the next best thing is if you're playing live piano, um, possibly get it transposed into some sheet music. That could probably be an option for you. I don't know of any services that will do the transposing for you or possibly that you might actually have it. Now, if you don't own the rights to the work, obviously that's gonna be a whole legal headache that you're gonna run into. Um, but that's one way to do it, David, and I'm glad you brought that up. Never thought about that before. And I got a good friend of mine who actually has a successful uh, guitar channel. And uh, he's written some books before, but I never, it never occurred to me to probably say to him like, hey, maybe you should see about doing some guitar tablatures. So, uh, Easy Graphics, thank you so much for the shout out. Like the like button, folks. I'll catch the replay. Thank you so much. Alrighty. Caleb says, hope y'all are well. I am doing fantastic here. Okay, so here we go. We've got angstas. That sounds like a terrible idea. Honestly, have you ever looked at how many filler words people use in common conversation? It can be um, a lot of editing. Is it a terrible idea? No, but it's going to require the same amount of work of sitting down and editing that you would normally do anyways when you're writing your stuff. I know angstas, you feel very comfortable in writing your content as is. So maybe this particular approach isn't for you. This is what I recommend to people when they lack the time or they lack the expertise. Because if they don't have the expertise, they can at least leverage the other person's authority in that. Kathy Mankin says, hi Adele. What's up Kathy, how you doing? Yeah, here we go. Thomas A. Bradley said, 18 platforms, you made my head explode again. Geez. Yeah, 18 platforms. Uh, it was funny when I did the interview with him and he's just like, hey man, uh, we're going we're gonna to see about doing uh, 18 platforms. I'm like, how? How? And he's like, well, Restream, you already showed it to me, man. I'm like, you're going you're gonna to go 18. Like, okay, that's cool. Because right now as I'm broadcasting this, I'm going to three Facebook groups, a Facebook business page, LinkedIn Live, my YouTube channel of Self Publishing with Dale podcast, and the Restream channel, as well as Restream's Facebook page. Uh, I think I might be missing one. It's very possible, but I think there's all in all about eight different platforms that I'm broadcasting to at the moment. Would I go with 18? <laughs> I'm not so sure. I just don't feel like setting all that up. Okay, Mojo says, YouTube as usual with a nice 84 degrees on a cloudy afternoon in St. Augustine. Thank you so much. Angstaz says, you've almost abandoned, you mostly abandoned us on Twitch. Angstaz, where's the love today? You're giving me a hard time. Come on now. You go stand in the corner. Joe Carroll saying, YouTube in Columbus. Good stuff. Kay says, glad to be here. Kay, thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> Angstas comes back here. Yay, I caught something live for once. Awesome. That's good. That's good. Oh, here we go. Um, Mojo brings up a good one. By the way, Mojo is a very prolific author. You ever get the, uh, the uh, time? Go over, take a look at her channel, Mojo Seedlack on YouTube. Fantastic information when it comes to self-publishing. She says, I like to dictate on the live sprints when Ziggy's at work. He always thinks I'm talking to him. <laughs> Now, Ziggy is Mojo's husband, and he's thinking that she's having a conversation with him. So there you go. Angstas goes off and stands in the corner. Oh, Angstas, you know that you're good by me. You know you're good by me. Good afternoon, Dale. Good afternoon to you too, Rusty. Rusty is actually a very interesting uh, person because uh, during his off time when he's not working, he will typically just uh, voice dictate everything into a mobile phone. So Rusty's 
uh, a good prime example of using voice dictation for some of his work. Kathy Mankin says, LOL, lots of lettuce. I need to be sent to the corner a lot myself. <laughs> no, you're good. You, you have to get to the on Onkstaz's level of roasting me here. Okay, here we go. Facebook in Idaho, voice typing is a whole lot different skill. Still learning how. Yeah, uh, so when you, you start to do voice dictation, it does get a little bit sketchy. So what I would say is go slow, or, uh, speak very articulate, like make sure that you're you know, enunciating everything. So that way it really picks it up. So if you are the type of person that, you know, mumbles or speaks in slang or has a very thick accent, then chances are very likely you're gonna have a lot of editing in front of you. But let's just, for instance, we'll go ahead and I'm gonna text my wife. So we're gonna open up here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the microphone on here. And so what I would say is, right now I am broadcasting on live stream, period. Would you be interested in joining me, question mark? Would love to hear back from you, period. So, and it came out just fine. No problems as right now I'm broadcasting on, on live stream. <laughs> Would you be interested in joining me? Would love to hear back from you. And it says so and. So there you go. Voice dictation does take a little while. Some people prefer using avenues like dragon naturally speaking because you can train the dragon. So that way it can kind of understand who you are and what you're typically looking for. But in most instances, you're still going to have to speak out that punctuation. This is why I always prefer transcripts over actual voice dictation. Here we go. I do like whatever plugin you're using to engage with chat though. Oh, thank you so much. That's actually on Restream. That's on Restream. Um, all I have to do is over here on the, I, the reason why I don't normally do this on my other broadcasts is I usually am not on studio inside Restream Studio. I go into OBS. And so that feature is not available through OBS at this point. Um, would love to see that more. Maybe I should see about hitting up Restream. Restream, what's up? Joe Carroll says, I've written two novels and I dictated 85% with my phone on Google Docs. I've done a Google Docs as well. I've done many short stories. I used to write fiction books or fiction short stories for my wife that she would uh, use for publishing. And I would just open up Google Docs and literally talk it out. She thought I was absolutely crazy, but it worked. Yeah, speak loud. You will need to edit on the go. <laughs> yeah. Rusty said, I grew up in Louisiana. Google speech has no idea what I'm saying half the time. Oh, here we go. So uh, Thomas brings up a great point. Tried the voice thing with Dragon. My character's Jamaican accent and Wickersham burned out its circuits. That's amazing. That's amazing. Ooh, yeah. I forgot about Dragon. I need to get that out again. Yeah, if you own it, for sure. Definitely use that. Well, um, if there's no other questions, I, I do appreciate everybody tuning in for these past seven weeks where we've done the self-publish and stream series. And I want to give a very big, quick shout out to the fine folks over at Restream. If you would like to help support the cause, obviously go pick yourself up free access to Restream over at dalelinks.com slash Restream, or you can get seven days of free pro when you visit dalelinks.com slash Restream Pro. You will thank me. You can be able to see this. What about Descript? Ooh, okay. David Hunt. Um, I have not heard of, I, I've heard of Descript, but I have yet to use it. So let me just pull up really quick here. Um, yeah. Okay. So Descript is an all-in-one audio and video editing as easy as a document. Um, give that a shot. I have not tried it myself but it could be something worth looking into. What I would say is, David, if you have the opportunity and you're, you're doing something like this, rather than spending money into an app, you could probably just use something just as simple as this. But I don't know if Descript has some things that make it easier to edit. I know a, a Ross actually had shared with me once before that there's a new podcasting like editing software that takes artificial intelligence and figures out where there's filler words and it'll cut those any kind of like gaps in speech, it'll cut those out. So it jump cuts and it makes one full piece. Um, so I imagine there's probably gonna be something like that. Maybe Descript is like that. I can't really be able to vouch for them since I've never used them before. So excellent point though. But uh, thank you so much for tuning in, folks. Again, if you want to catch the replay, go on over to dailylinks.com slash stream. You want to get free access to Restream, go to dailylinks.com slash Restream. And of course, you want to get seven days free pro 
go over, that's what I'm using right now, Restream Pro. Go on over to dalelinks.com slash Restream Pro to give it a shot today. I want to say thank you to the folks over at Restream for allowing me the time to come on to their channel on YouTube as well as their Facebook group and broadcasting out and about. It's meant the world to me that they've uh, invested in the sponsorship here in this full series. So you want to thank them? Go pick yourself up an account immediately. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale and as part of the Self-Publishing Stream Series, I bid you adieu. Thank you, everybody.